I would like to talk about a receiver that was used in the late 1930s, probably through the late 1950s, as the entry level or the beginner's receiver. Uh, this receiver was something that uh, a young ham might build under the guidance of his Elmer. The Elmer is the, the ham that guides the, uh, the young ham into the hobby. Usually this project came out of a, a book like this. This is a 1951 version of the Radio Handbook by Editors and Engineers. It's also known as the West Coast Handbook. And usually the first project in that book was a two-tube regenerative receiver. In this case, uh, we have a 6J7 pentode and a 6J5 triode uh, driving the headphones. And these were outfitted with plug-in coils, allowed the, the uh, use of this receiver from the 160 meter band, about 1.8 megahertz band, up to 28 megahertz, although I don't think it worked very well that high in frequency. And this was usually a project that would take a few weeks to uh, construct using, uh, using the Elmer's uh, plentiful junk box the receiver was used on the air for code reception. Most of the uh, most of the communications that at that time for beginners was uh, CW or code. Um, the circuit started out in the late uh, 20s when the very very first uh, tetrodes came about. Uh, this first tube, the uh, 224. Uh, was uh, one of the very first tetrodes uh, developed. The circuit uh, came about probably about 1930-31. Uh, the regenerative uh, tetrode uh, feeding a single stage triode. So that's the, the birth of this circuit. Uh, tubes of course developed very quickly and uh, early receivers like the National uh, uh, SW3 used more sophisticated tubes uh, like the type 35 or 36 and 6D6. This is a type 36 from about 1931. Um, uh, 6D6 uh, probably from the mid-30s and all the way on up the line till uh, uh, the late 40s. Uh, we go through uh, the 6J7, 6K7, 6SK7 and 6SJ7. These are all uh, typical tubes that would be used in the same circuit, a regenerative detector into a single stage audio. Um, the famous World War II Paraset uses this tube lineup, uses a pair of 6SK7s, but in effect it's a regenerative detector into a single stage of audio. This was used by the resistance in World War II uh, to, to communicate over the channel. Um, this is a two-tube regenerative receiver. I'll be going into the construction of this receiver in part three of this video series on this type of receiver. Part two will actually operate the receiver and uh, pick up some stations and see how it tunes. But I just wanted to introduce the history in this first video. Let's look a little bit at the schematic. Coming in from the antenna, we have a link coupled input into the tank coil. You'll notice a dotted line between the two coils. That's known as a Faraday shield. The Faraday shield eliminates the capacitive coupling between the two coils and reduces greatly the interference that you get from broadcast stations and strong shortwave stations. We then go into a tapped coil. This is known as a Hartley coil. This is a Hartley oscillator and with a pentode it is electron coupled. By increasing the transconductance of the tube through the voltage on the screen we can bring it close to oscillation for AM reception and actually into oscillation for what's known as autodyne reception. Autodyne reception acts as a BFO for the incoming signal and you're able to get a note out of it for a continuous carrier signal like a code signal. It 
also works very well for single sideband reception. We then have an audio filter after detection takes, takes place. This is actually a grid leak detector with regenerative feedback. The audio comes out of here, gets filtered, and goes into a high value choke which allows the DC to pass from the power supply to the plate of the pentode, but the audio passes undisturbed into the volume control in the single stage amplifier. The amplifier goes into a transformer, and the transformer is what changes the impedance to be able to handle the various types of headphones. I have a tap off the top so that I can uh, use 200 or 2000 ohm high impedance headphones or I can use the output of the transformer for 600 ohm headphones and I even can go down to 8 ohm type headphones so I have three different uh, output impedances that this single tube amplifier will drive. Also notice that we have a regulator Zener here that regulates the voltage of 56 volts before going into the regeneration control this helps with the stability of the set. There is bias provided by this cathode a resistor and capacitor on the audio stage which puts that into class A for low distortion audio. Uh, notice that the filament is AC but we have a potentiometer across the AC a low value that's grounded and that's a hum pot allows us to null out the hum so this is a very simple circuit and something that a, a beginner would have been able to build with some help. Uh, very popular in the, uh, in the 40s, all the way through the 50s. And you find this in the ham magazines and, uh, and handbooks of that era.